Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another video. The theme of today's video is a little bit new and different. It is... Lemon Locomotives. So today I'm going to be defining lemon locomotives as locos that actually have design defects with them. I've picked every loco in my collection and all of them in my opinion have some sort of design fault. Now I haven't picked locos that in my experience have just had a failed motor or another minor defect. I've tried to keep it just to models that I think really do have design flaws in them. Now, the interesting thing there is that I might be wrong, okay? So one interesting thing I want to try and do with this is for you guys to watch the video, see if you own any of these models, and let me know, do you have problems with them or not? I think the results from that might make an interesting follow-up video. Today, though, I've got some really interesting models to show you all sorts of design gaffes, really. We've got bad motor choices. Oh, man, there's all sorts of crazy things. Locos that derail for no particular reason. Locos that don't have driving wheels on the track. You name it, we've got everything today. Also, check out the new shirts. I've got these cool I'm not a train enthusiast, except I'm a model train enthusiast shirt. So do check those out at the link below. Anyway, here we go then with lemon locomotives. Let's take a look. Okay then folks, I would now like to introduce you to my lemons. This is a veritable sea of lemons for your delectation, but they're certainly not the type you'd like to eat. So every loco you see here, I consider to have something seriously wrong with it. I'm going to show you each one in turn and briefly explain what those problems are. So lemon the first is this one. It is a notorious laughingstock of a lemon. It is the Helgen 1361 locomotive. This has a lot of problems, but the issues today I'm going to be talking about are purely mechanical. The main problem with this one is that if you tighten up all of the base screws, the loco can no longer run. And that is just unforgivable. So yeah, if this loco is correctly assembled, it won't work properly. I had to loosen half of the screws on the model before it would work. And now that it's hot and summery again, the materials inside have expanded and it's now running badly again. So that is a lemon. Next up, we have the Hornby H-Class. This is a beautiful looking loco but alas a lemon about well I would say 80% of the people I know that own one of these have said the motors have failed this is now on motor number three for me now and there are several reasons why my friend Mike's movies did a lot of investigation into this first of all the flywheel catches the inside of the body second of all the gears the worm drive and the first gear mesh too closely together creates massive friction and eventually burns the motor out the motors are weak and feeble and they don't take very much burning out at all Next, the Adams Radial Tank by Oxford Rail, a famous lemon. Several design flaws with this. First of all, poor choice of motor. They tend to fail very, very easily, despite the lack of pulling power of the loco. Also, the rear truck and the front bogey are not correctly sprung, which means the driving wheels are sometimes lifted entirely off the track, particularly if the track is on a gradient. A horrible lemon of a design. Next up, the Hornby Railroad 14XX. These have the Type 7 motor in them, which, as you might have seen in my previous videos, have a tendency to explode quite violently. Also, the rear truck on this loco is not sprung, which means that the main driving wheel, this is the, the middle one there, actually does not touch the track. And the most hilarious aspect of this design cock-up is that the traction tyres are installed onto those wheels and they don't touch the track at all. What a joke. Next up, this one is easy to explain very simply, poor choice of motor. Most of these run really, really badly. Oxford have now fixed the problem, but mine is still an absolute lemon. Next up, we have the Backman Emily. Emily here is representing the entire Backman Thomas and Friends range, really, which have poor quality motors. Emily here has long burnt out. She doesn't actually have a motor anymore. She's just freewheeling. For some reason, Backman just don't use good quality motors in this range. They tend to burn out very, very easily, partly possibly because of the eye mechanism, which increases the friction. But about, I would say around 30% of my Backman Thomas Locos have now burnt out. Very poor show. Next lemon is this, it is the Hornby S15 locomotive, beautiful locos, great price, again poor choice of motor. Loads of people that I know have had motor problems with these. The motors start off usually just fine, then they start to fluctuate in terms of speed, 
and then obviously you can start to have those famous slowdowns and failures. Mine started that process and I just bought a cheap Chinese motor and put it in, not had any problems since. A real lemon. Next up, another absolute beauty, it is the Backman N-Class. Generally speaking, this is a fair runner, except the tender connection between loco and tender is an absolute joke. It's famous for creating massive derailments on any sort of curves. It's an absolute frustration, and this is a well-documented problem, and yet Backman are still selling train sets today with this loco, with that problem. And possibly even the latest N-Class releases have the same tender to loco connection, although I don't know because I haven't owned one. Let me know if you know. The next lemon is the Hornby 2800 class, this is the old one. Now, performance-wise, these are okay, they're tender-driven, they're not very realistic, but quite powerful. The lemon zest flavouring for this logo actually comes from the smoke generator. This smoke generator gets so hot that it actually melted the loco body. And if I show you a close-up, you can see that the top of the boiler there has actually started to warp and melt and the chimney is leaning backwards into the body. What a design gaff that is. I absolutely love that one. What a lemon. The next lemon is the Hornby Henry. What a lot of fun people have had with these. Bear in mind, these are designed for children. They're supposed to be kind of toys. They certainly shouldn't be having design problems, and yet they do. First things first, these are notorious for having loose crank pins. The crank pins work themselves free, and then obviously the valve gear falls to pieces. What a lot of fun that must be. The other thing is that the metal tyres on the tender wheels are never attached properly and invariably they become detached from the main wheel and cause major derailments and nobody knows how to fix them. <laughs> Next up we have the original Hornby Railroad 9F. These were produced with poor quality metal alloys for the chassis which meant that they crumbled away due to Mazak rot basically making the tenders entirely useless and if you were extra unlucky the motor mountings would fall to bits as well. So that's a lemon in disguise, a beautiful runner for many years but eventually did become a lemon and it was due to a design fault. Next up we have a variety of Backman Locos uh, from the sort of split chassis era 10, 15, 20 years ago. I've got the B1s here but several classes were affected. The split chassis design has many many issues but that's not what I'm complaining about here. What I'm complaining about here are the wheels, as you can see, the actual green, well, on black respectively, painted wheels have been removed from these models. Because they are made of a plastic, they are separately fitted into the metal wheel discs, which is an insane design. And over time they warp and twist and pop out and catch on the valve gear and the coupling rods and whatnot, and actually prevent the locos from working, and I've actually had to cut out the centres of each wheel in order to let them run. It's a ridiculous design flaw. Why would they not just make solid wheels and paint them? I have no idea. But that has to be a lemon, and they really are lemons, those. <laughs> and of course, once the axles start to fail on the split chassis mechanism, they become double lemons, extra lemony. They'll really draw your lips back. Next up, a complete lemon. This is the Dapol Class 73. Lots of design flaws with this. First of all, the motors seem to be pretty garbagey. Generally speaking, mine, with its original motor, I've since changed it, would take around five minutes to actually reach a reasonable speed from cold. It would just run incredibly slowly and it would draw a lot of current and be very unreliable. Second of all, the lubricant that Dapol used in these seems to go really sticky and viscous over time, which creates loads of friction and is probably partly the reason why the motors struggled to run these locos so much. Also, there's a lack of rotation in the bogies, which causes major derailments on most curves. That is not something I've been able to fix, so that is pretty amusing. Next lemon is this, the Backman Circle. I mean, it is a lemon because of the way it looks. It's just, it looks actually quite rude, let's be honest. I think the po most polite way I can describe it is it looks a little bit like a green rotten banana, but that's as far as, or a cucumber, I guess. <laughs> But the main thing that makes this a lemon is the fact that it would consistently derail on the track that it came with in the train set. The reason being, I believe, is because this was assembled badly and as you can see, the frame for one of the bogies has actually been fitted upside down, which just shows how much care and attention was put into these at the factory. That was quite amusing. The next lemon is this, it's the Hornby Railroad Class 47. What an interesting time I had with this one. So it is the sort of ring field design, it has only one driven bogey, and let's just say it's this one for the sake of argument. 
On, on each bogey, there are six wheels, three axles. Only two of those axles are driven. The center axle is not. But the center axle is actually lower than the other two axles on the bogey, which actually forms a pivot so that at any time, only two of the other axles are actually touching the track, which is a ridiculous design flaw, which means, you know, at odd moments, the loco will completely lose traction, particularly if it balances on that center axle and then no driving wheels are touching the track. That's a lot of fun. I've had to actually remove the center wheels and just glue them on as dummies. <sighs> that was a very frustrating time. Next, we have the penultimate lemon. It is the Mahano Wego TGV. This had an interesting problem. Well, first of all, it was dead on arrival. I had to adjust the pickups and clean off the copious lubrication before it would work. Second of all, the design of the coaches means that they actually catch each other on any sort of curves or transitions from straight to curves, which causes derailments most of the time. It's actually quite interesting because the train set that these came with did not have any straights, and I remarked at the time that it was strange that there would be no straights included. I guess that makes sense now because any straights and then a curve will derail it. Suggests that maybe Mahano knew they had a design flaw. Okay, the final lemon, possibly the greatest of them all, is the 221, the Voyager that Backman made. So these have a tilting mechanism, except the tilting mechanism causes derailments every single time. The tilting is activated when the bogies are turned, which actually makes the turning of the bogies incredibly difficult, and therefore the units just derail on any sort of curves. This is a famous problem, you have to loosen loads of these screws and stuff to get them to run reliably, and even so, mine will only run, I think, on one or two of my lines. Any tight curves will just throw it off. It's a complete joke. So there you go, you have now seen all of my lemons. They are quite amusing. I mean, you've got to laugh, haven't you? Um, I've spent a lot of money on these and for some of these design issues to even exist is just completely unacceptable. So I'm now going to select six of the most egregious lemons and we'll get them running and just laugh at them as they struggle, shall we? I should say some of them I've been able to fix, so some of them aren't that lemony anymore. But if you get up close and take a deep <laughs> inhalation you can still smell that bitter lemony fragrance on them uh, so you'll always know what they truly are okay here comes the first lemon now then it's the backman n class which demonstrates total incompetence and also a lack of testing for which backman should be completely ashamed and one of the worst parts about this one is that it's still on the market and this issue is well documented by the way just look at rm web you can see loads of people complaining about it i was fiddling with the coupling a little while ago and i broke it now that it's broken, it actually works better than it did when it was in good condition. So don't forget it folks, Backman Locos, they actually work better when they're broken, which is certainly saying something, isn't it? So there we go, the end class, what a lemon. And of course that is to say nothing about how poor the quality of the mechanism is, and also how difficult it is to service. Mm. I will only hint. Next up then we have the Hornby H-Class, definitely a lemon from my collection. This is probably the one loco that's given me the most trouble of all others. Now if Model Railways Unlimited is correct and the flywheel catches the inside of the body and the worm drive is meshing too closely with the gears, then those are two separate design faults, uh, which is double trouble and doubly unacceptable. I've actually taken Mike's advice and I've removed the flywheel from my H-Class entirely. And I've also made tiny little spacers, really, out of electrical tape, which just raise up the motor in its housing very slightly. And I'm hoping it will allow this motor to survive a little bit longer. Also, I'm hoping the lack of flywheel should reduce the load on the motor as well and help it to survive. It also has a bit of a tendency to derail as well, which I never noticed before, but it does seem to be doing that now as well. So perhaps that's another issue. Either way, there's no doubt in my mind that this one is a lemon. All right, here comes the tertiary lemon, and I maybe have chosen this one for the wrong reasons. I might have just chosen it because I can't believe it exists, and how terrifying it is, of course. But it is also quite a lemon. It runs really slowly. It makes a grinding noise. The derailments are pretty constant, although not on the inside line, which is why I've chosen to run it on there. Away from the ballast and all the extra points, it does seem to run a lot better. But either way, it is a travesty in double-O gauge form. And for that, I did want to include it. So I'm sure you all want to thank me for that in the comments. And I wish you all a good, peaceful night's sleep tonight. 
And just because I know you want it, I'm going to get close so that you can really hear the sound she makes. Are you ready? Sounds like a tractor of death. So there you are, folks. I hope you enjoyed your first course of lemons. I guess next we'll move on to dessert, which is the lemon drizzle cake. So three more lemons coming right at you. Clear the palates. Let's do it. Okay, next up then we have a major lemon. It is the Dapol 73. Now, the reason this makes the cut is because it has multiple design flaws. One is bad enough, but several is just terrible. Now, I have actually managed to clean off all that sticky lubricant and I've put a new motor in so that as you can see, it's running at a proper speed, but I did not find a way to cure those derailments due to the lack of rotation in the bogies. So unfortunately that does still happen. Also, the method of picking up is a joke. It's done through the axles and there are two contacts per axle, which means that the connection is terrible. In order to get the thing to run without stuttering and cutting out constantly, as it did in my review, by the way, check that out, I actually had to dismantle the wheel sets, clean everything out thoroughly and apply petroleum jelly so that the, the different points of contact would actually make contact. It's just a nightmare. But if you're willing to do all the work and if you're willing to keep it on a flat layout, unfortunately I don't really have the facility to do that because I'm on the carpet, partly my own fault of course. Uh, but yeah, with a bit of work it can actually become a decent runner as you can see. But it will need a new motor and it will need a complete strip down before it will work properly. So this next one is one of the most laughable lemons. It was doomed from the start actually. When this was new, when it was first released, it was actually delayed. I had a pre-order. They all had to go back to Hornby because the pickups were sticking out beyond the wheels and causing problems, causing derailments. Now that it's here, obviously the fact that those driving wheels don't touch the track and therefore the traction tyres aren't touching the track either, it causes the Loco to be an absolute dog of a runner. As you can see, two coaches and it's dead. And that isn't really very much of a gradient, is it? That is literally just Gordon's Hill. Two coaches and it's dead. And even... The Dapol 73 can beat it. Look at that. And you know what's going to happen when it reaches the points, don't you? Of course you do. <laughs> so the 14XX is a one coach wonder, unfortunately. And here's a harrowing thought for you. As a Hornby Railroad loco, there will be people out there that started out with this loco. Think of that. By releasing a model in this state, just think what Hornby are doing to those beginners who are trying this wonderful hobby for the first time. It's a real shame. And finally, last, and yes, very much least, we have the elusive Elgin 1361 tank engine. Oh, oh, it's going the wrong way, hang on. There we go. It tried to escape the ridicule, but it could not. So for me, I think this one has to be the worst one. Uh, the axles, now that it's warmer, have become so stiff that there's basically no lateral movement on them whatsoever. They can't move side to side, which means not only does the thing struggle on curves now, but also that the pickups just become separate from the wheels and they don't make contact anymore, which means the thing stops dead. And check out my live streams uh, when people ask to see this run. A lot of the time it ends up just stopping dead and I have to fiddle with the wheels to try and get the thing to work again. Again, I put it on the inside line, so there aren't that many points, but as you can see, every time it reaches one, it does a little jolt. Or even a complete stop. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Go on then, love. See what this is like to run, folks? Imagine what a nice time you'd have shunting with this. You don't have to imagine. <laughs> You've got one. You certainly won't have to imagine. And obviously, to add insult to injury, the asking price was ridiculous. I think the RRP was £150, something around there. Absolutely insane. So there you have it then, folks. Six of my finest lemons ready for collection next Wednesday morning. So do let me know, have you got any lemons in your collection? Are any of them the same as mine? I'd be interested to know. Let me know what is your worst running loco. That would be interesting. See if there's any common denominators there. 
Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. It was just a bit of fun, obviously, although I'm being entirely honest. Uh, the locos I have showed today, genuinely, or at least in my opinion, should not have been released in their states. And um, I suppose the only good thing that comes from them is the fact that we get some entertainment here. But in all seriousness, people spent a lot of money, a lot of good money on these locos. And unfortunately, experiences like that can be very damaging to this hobby, which is something I feel very vehemently against. But as I say, for entertainment purposes, they work absolutely fine. And obviously, if you're thinking of buying any of these, it's up to you. Obviously, make an informed judgment, but I would not recommend them. Okay, folks. Well, thanks for watching. I will see you on the next one. All right. Take care.